Well howdy folks, welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. On this episode, I wanted to do just a real quick one on how to sanitize equipment for fermenting. Now when we're making fermented beverages, whether it's wine or beer, cider, mead, sake, or whatever, when we're making this stuff, we need equipment that's really, really, really clean. Now for the most part, beer is gonna come out wonderful tasting every time. But there is one thing that can spoil it, and that is if you don't have sanitary equipment. If you get some sort of uh, you know, yeast or bacteria growth going on in that beer that you don't want there, it won't ruin it, it won't make it undrinkable, but it won't make it very nice. It might make it kind of musty. So instead of getting a beer that's like that, let's make sure everything is very, very clean. So on this show, we're gonna learn how to do proper sanitizing for your fermenting equipment. Now guys, let's get in there and get at it, come on. Okay guys, here it is. We're ready to get started on that sanitizing. I wanted to show you just the basic goodies that we're gonna be using for this. Sanitizing, guys, is really important, but you don't have to spend a lot of money on expensive chemicals to make this happen the right way. Bleach is the most common sanitizing agent known for this, for home brewing. Now, yeah, they would love to sell you some other stuff, but frankly, if you want to get by, this is all it really takes. But the one thing you have to remember, when you're sanitizing with bleach, number one, don't use too much of it, and number two, make sure that you eliminate all traces of it because even a small amount of it will kill your yeast off in your beer. Okay, so other than bleach, you're gonna need something to sanitize in. I like to use these five gallon buckets. And here's a neat thing about these guys. If you want to use more than one bucket, like you're gonna sanitize a lot of bottles all at once, then you can use four of these or more and they don't take up that much more space. It's just that they nest inside of each other. They stack so they take up a small footprint. And then you can of course store stuff inside of that and uh, it's even more practical. So the bucket works really good for that. Also, you're gonna need bottle brushes. I have a big one here for my carboys and a smaller one, and I'm gonna take this off my drill. I originally purchased this little bottle brush and it had a, a bale handle on it, you know, just sort of like this one here, it's like a little loop. And I cut that thing off and then I fixed it so it would fit right into my drill there. And here's the beautiful thing. When I wanna clean my bottles out, I can do it under power. I have my own power bottle cleaner. Okay, so there's an idea for you and it works really, really well. And that's the reason I'm doing this, guys. It's not that I don't think you can't sanitize your own bottles, but I figure I could probably bring you a few tips that'll help out. Like how to get water in the buckets easier. Having that fill tube. Let me show you. On your kitchen faucet, guys, you can purchase an adapter and you can fit a regular faucet hose fitting onto it. Now, if you're careful about the things that you buy, I purchased an all brass unit here and that way all the internal components are brass. So the only thing that comes in contact with the water from the faucet out is brass or this food grade vinyl tubing. So even though these are common hose parts, if you use the right ones, guys, it's perfect for this. Now, why did I use this funky little Y? It's important. I did this on purpose because you see this open end over here. If you're wanting to get the rest of the tube to purge its water, all you have to do is open the valve on this other side. It allows air up through there and it will drop all of the water that's in that tube out just immediately. So that works really good that way. And it'll set on your faucet if you get the right adapter. So it's a cool way of filling buckets, carboys, and everything else. And then the last item I'm going to recommend, this right here. When you're cleaning your carboys, you need a two foot long piece of tube. It doesn't have to be a big tube. This one is, I think, three eighths tube. And it's just perfect. So what I do is I put my thumb over one end, insert it into the bottle, and when I turn the bottle upside down, I release my thumb. It allows air to rush up into the carboy 
and suddenly it will release its contents without glugging or slowing down at all. It'll pour it out smooth, clean, and quickly. Always remember, sanitizing is the probably the one key thing to making a really good quality beer. If everything is sanitized, your beer is going to come out okay, guys. Now let's move on to getting this going. Okay, guys, we have buckets here that are filled with bleach water. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bottles, I'm going to submerge them, and wait for those bubbles to stop. All right, guys, that right there is a half a case. So basically, basically, you can easily fit a half a case of bottles in each one of your sanitizing buckets. What I'll do is I'll fill these things up. I'll give them five to ten minutes, and then I give them a good cleaning out with my bottle brush. And we'll take a look at that next. Now, as I mentioned, also we needed to give it a bit of uh, cleaning with our bottle brush cleaner. All you have to do is just push that down into the bottle. Give it a good blast and go to the next one. And I tell you what, don't keep it running when you pull it out of the water unless you just want yourself and everything else to be nice and wet. Now guys, when you're finished with your sanitizing, take those bottles while they're still wet and put them under running water. You're going to want a nice warm water for this. and let them fill completely. And all I do after that is I simply store them upside down so that they dry. And these bottles are still hot from the warm water and they usually dry nice and quick. And at this point they're actually ready for bottling so I can go ahead and put beer in these right now if I want to also. So there we go. Sanitized, cleaned, and here, get a smell. Yeah, no smell of chlorine bleach at all, so you know there's none of that left behind to mess with your beer. That's all there is to it. Sanitizing your bottles, guys, so very important. There's not a lot of work. Now, here's another neat little item you can get. On the end of your faucet, you can purchase this neat little spout that comes down and curves up, and it has a little uh, tab on the end of it that's a valve, so that when you insert your bottle over it, it automatically turns it on and it sprays out the inside of your bottle. So a really cool bottle washer item that you might want to consider. Uh, I need to purchase one of those because I think they're pretty cool and I, I should have one by now. Anyway, there you have it. The long and simple and short and easy and all of that of it. All right, guys, I have here two fermenters. One primary fermenter and one secondary fermenter. Both of these have to get cleaned up. Now, if you'll notice, there is a lot of built up on this whole primary here. It's really grody up inside of here. So what we have to do is to get all of that out. And in the bottom, there's what's referred to as trob. And that is, is really gross, slimy sludge that's built up down in there. So we have to get all of that out of there and away from us. Now, in this other one, there is a little beer left and also some yeast down in there. This, guys, if you are interested in collecting yeast, this is where you go ahead and swirl this around a little bit and you get that yeast cake going and moving around. And once you get it re-dissolved real well, you can take this liquid right here, pour it off into a bottle just like this, use a funnel, put this fermentation lock on it, fill it with some alcohol or some clean water in here, and then put it in the refrigerator and suddenly, suddenly you are saving your yeast, reusing it, and you can get several batches of beer off of the same yeast. So don't be afraid to try this little trick, guys. It's a lot of fun. Now, when it comes to cleaning this carboy, these things are kind of tricky. You know, it's got a really narrow opening at the top there. So how do we get down in there and clean all of that grode out of that? Well, I'm going to show you how it's done. It's not that tough. You're going to need a bottle brush, one of these guys. If you'll notice how I have mine bent, it goes straight and bends a little bit right here for about one foot. It goes down and it bends over again. And I bent it this way on purpose so that when I'm, I've got this down in the neck of the tank, 
this part can get over against the sides. Okay, and you'll see how that works in just a moment. And guys, the first thing I do is I take my fermentation lock out of the bottle. I have a little bucket that I put everything into, and that way I'm going to bleach off all of my parts that are used associated with my fermenters, okay? That way everything gets cleaned out well. Now that primary fermenter, I'm going to take what liquid's in the bottom, I'm going to swirl it around as much as I can because I want to get everything out of there that I can when I first pour and I very gently want to pour out the contents of this. Now something I like to do when I am running water down into my carboy I like to not insert the hose far but just right here at the opening and I will direct the water sideways from the opening here by tilting it slightly and that way it runs water off the side of the bottle and it helps to wash some of this this darker material on the side here right off of there. See how I glide that water off of the side of the carboy there? And what that does is that just helps to break loose some of that built up creosin on the top. Alright, I just picked that up to pour it in my sink. Now I'm going to rinse that once more, just lightly, pour it out once more, and then I'm going to fill it with hot water. I'm going to add about a half a cup of bleach to it, and I want to make sure that that hot water comes up over this creosin line. I want it to come up good and high. Something I want to recommend, guys, is that you make sure that underneath where you're working down on that floor, place a towel down there. And you're also going to need another towel. You're going to need a folded towel to put on the counter where you're going to set that side of that bottle. It'll help stabilize the bottle. It'll also catch any backwash, okay? So it'll help keep your messes down. There, now with my funnel. Makes that job very easy. One thing I do want to mention though, guys, when you are using this bleach, when it's time to clean it out, you have to be very, very meticulous, very careful in how well you do that. All right, I'm just going to let that bottle fill. As soon as it comes up to the right level, then I'm going to let it sit and soak for about 15 to 20 minutes. That'll loosen all of this. And when I put my brush in there to do my cleaning, it'll go smooth and easy, guys. Sometimes it's helpful to use gloves for this, guys. Also, while we're talking about being safe, I am presently wearing some steel-toed shoes. I recommend that if you're going to use these glass carboys like this, you get some steel-toed shoes also. This is important. If one of these things drops, it lands on your foot, uh, it can be devastating, all right? You can be in the hospital getting a foot reattached. So, very dangerous on these glass bottles. They do make webbing carriers for this and also some bag carriers that they make for these. Consider that if you use the glass. Use all due caution with these. Very, very careful with them. And uh, consider also the possibility of the plastic fermenters. Those are really nice option. I'm actually starting to look at them myself right now because, uh, you know, as I'm getting older, I want something a little safer. All right, guys, let's get on with cleaning up this carboy. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to show you how to use that angled brush. So first, just go ahead and push him right on into the bottle. That bend is the only place you're going to hang up a little bit, but that's okay. It'll bend right around it and down in there. Now, as you can see, the brush at this angle can clean the neck and the upper part of the carboy right here. I just got to wet it down and give it a working over. If I lower it a little bit, I can use the tip of that brush to knock off that creosin. Isn't that simple? And if you'll notice after only 20 minutes of soaking, that creosin just breaks free quite easily. And the rest, I can use that brush sideways to just brush down the sides of the tank. To pull one of these out, I recommend covering it with a towel 
and then wrapping it as it comes up. Otherwise, you're going to be splattering bleach everywhere with that brush. There we go. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get this tank drained. Now, that tube that we had, when I get this thing turned on its side, I want to have this tube plugged right here with my thumb. So I just plug one end of it, and that just keeps any extra fluid from rushing up into it. It makes it a lot easier for this to do its job if you just plug one end as it's going in. Okay, now, if you want, you can go ahead and insert it into the carboy ahead of time or insert it when you tip it sideways, but I find this to be a lot easier. I'm putting it in now, right through the top. Grab the top of my carboy. Now, release my thumb, and boom. The water will drain quickly, freely, and easily. Watch what happens. See the difference? A simple tube makes, and how fast it'll drain it. And you can see the value of the towel now. It allows you to set it on the upper shoulder of that bottle. So guys, at this point, the last thing I have to do is just to fill this carboy once more. I'm going to fill this thing up about three times, uh, draining it off, and I'll do that until I get zero chlorine smell. Now, the reason I fill it is because we're playing the parts per million game, guys, and that is, if you're not sure you're washing the sides down well enough as you're rinsing it out, filling it up will dilute anything that's left in there down to the point where it will no longer be effective to your beer. And if you do that, you've assured yourself of having cleared that bleach from your fermenting bottles. Well guys, there it is. You've seen how to clean those carboys. You've seen how to clean the bottles. It's mostly about just using a good sanitizing solution, plenty of water, giving it time to do its job, making sure everything is clean. It's like uh, you can't clean dirt, so get that dirt off of there, make sure it's sanitary, and make sure it is well, well rinsed. Now, some of the sanitizers that are out there, you don't have to do heavy rinsing with, okay? And they won't hurt the beer. They're sanitizers that are designed to make everything nice and clean and sanitary without disrupting the yeasts that are used for beer making. So there's some really cool stuff. Also, sometimes, every once in a while, it is very, very smart for you to do what's called a shock treatment. Now, guys, a shock treatment is where you use a sanitizer that's completely different from the one that you normally use. A good example of this, if I am going to shock treat uh, my equipment, I will use potassium metabisulfite. Now, this is commonly used in winemaking. It's used to stop the fermenting process. And it doesn't take much of it. Just a teaspoon or two in your wine stops all of that fermenting. It kills every bit of the yeast, all of it. Bam, and that's over with. And you know, on a six gallon jug of wine, you know, the tiny bit of this stuff goes a long way. So, the same thing when it comes to sanitizing. I can use two ounces of potassium metabisulfite in water and then use that as a sanitizing solution on each and every surface I want to do. And that's exactly what I'll do. I'll, I'll do the, the tile and the counters and the sink and everything, backsplash uh, my equipment. And the entire place gets what's called a shock treatment. So basically, sometimes germs, just like viruses, like a cold would do, they become resistant to some of the things that we use to kill them. And sometimes you have to use something different to really knock it down. So if you're getting some of that mold or whatever that's resistant in your house, this can resolve that problem. Well guys, there it is. It's your basic one over on sanitation. When you're working with beer and fermented beverages, remember, sanitization is one of the most important things that you can do. Well guys, thank you very much for watching this show and Texas Cooking Today. If you would, please click that like button. It would really help me out. And if you would also, please subscribe. Also, one last thing, guys. You folks have a good day. Bye-bye.